Hi friends, this is Hannah from Handmade by Design and today I'm going to be creating three pieces of textile art using mops from the Dollar Tree store. The mops are 100% cotton and they're really a very, very nice material to work with. DIY number one is a large 36 by 24 wall hanging and it turned out so beautifully it's hanging in my entryway and it's there to stay. For this, you'll need a 36 by 24 piece of MDF or wood or a canvas that has wood underneath it, an X-Acto knife, espresso brown, chocolate brown, brown, and golden brown from the Dollar Tree, and white acrylic paint. You'll need 11 mops from the Dollar Tree, a bucket, the bucket I also got at the Dollar Tree, white glue, and you need quite a bit. I bought a big container, I think I got it at Walmart, but you need 12 cups of glue, a paintbrush, scissors, gesso, and wire cutters. I bought a 36 by 24 canvas from Goodwill and it cost me $9.49 and it was on sale for 20% off. And the reason I bought this particular canvas is because it has MDF underneath it. This project will not work on canvas because it's a little bit heavy and it's wet. So you need a big piece of MDF or wood. I kind of like the canvas that's on top and I maybe I can use it for a project or just use the canvas for a project at a different time. So I removed the canvas from the MDF using a roller, a rotary cutter and an X-Acto knife. And I just took it off set the MDF to the side and I rolled up the canvas and set it aside for use at a later date. Next, using an X-Acto knife, I went around the inside border on the back and removed the rest of the canvas. I removed the cardboard backing as well, but all the canvas needs to be removed because the sides need to be smoothed. It's a frameless painting. I used four ounces of gesso over the MDF and it only took one coat to cover the entire front and sides of the MDF. When applying the gesso, after you have complete coverage, use a medium width brush and lightly go over the top of the gesso along the entire top of the MDF, making horizontal and vertical lines. Once I was satisfied that the lines were straight and even and it resembled a canvas, I let the gesso dry overnight. This creates the crosshatch look of a canvas. I added the darkest paint, espresso brown, on the bottom portion of the, of the MDF. I used a sponge roller and I applied the paint making sure that I got the sides and the back because as I said, this is a frameless painting and you don't wanna have any drip on the side. I skipped the chocolate brown and I went straight, it had too much pink in it or red in it. So then I went straight to the brown and added a layer above the espresso also making sure that I covered the sides and picked up any drippings from the side. The next colors I added were brown with a combination of golden brown. And I repeated the same process, just making sure that I was getting lighter gradients of brown as I was moving up the canvas. When you use a, a sponge roller brush, you get a really flat surface. Uh, the next color I added 
was golden brown and I'm getting a really nice gradient. I went from golden brown to adding golden brown and white and I'm really happy with the color gradient but I would like to get a little more texture which is hard to do with a sponge brush. So I just poured paint onto the canvas and using a back and forth motion, I created little wavy lines and I tried to leave like a little line of paint on the outside of each line to give it some texture. And I just went back and forth using all the different colors until I was satisfied with how my canvas looked. And this is the end result. I'm very satisfied with it. The top of the tree is gonna go on the lighter portion and the roots are going to go along the bottom. For the next portion, you need wire cutters, scissors, brown paint, a paint stirrer, a pair of disposable gloves, six cups of water. I just marked a container that I had with four cups and two cups to measure the glue in the water because it's two to one. You need glue, you need 11 mop heads, and your bucket, both from the Dollar Tree. I begin by adding two cups of water to the bucket and four cups of glue. Combine the glue and the water thoroughly and add brown paint to the bucket a little at a time, stirring well in between adding the paint until you get the color that you're looking for. That's perfect. Next, we're going to use seven mops that are not taken apart and four mops that are taken apart. If you've done any crafting, you've all probably already taken apart mops from the Dollar Tree. But if you haven't, open the mop up and right beneath my thumb, you'll see that there's a straight, like a tube, and you just snip that off with wire cutters and you can pull the mop directly out from the holder. Mostly it slides out very easily. Sometimes it'll leave behind a few strays. Now on the four mops that I cut, I kept the strings straight and I piled them on top of each other, keeping them all together and in a straight line so they would be easier to add color to. Next, I just gathered up all the loose ends and added those to the pile as well. I gave my glue a stir and now it's time to start adding the mops. I dip the mop into the glue and paint and water mixture and wring it out. And then I look inside of the mop and I realize that the color and the glue isn't getting inside the mop. So I dip it again and I wring it out again, trying to cover as much of the mop as possible, trying to get an even paint, even paint all over the mop. So on all the mops thereafter, I open them up before I put them into the glue mixture and then wring them out and put them to the side. I do this with seven mops that have not been taken apart and when I do the mops that have been taken apart, I just do it piecemeal by holding the pieces of mop in the center and dipping them in a few strands at a time and wringing them out just like I did the mops. It's a very simple process. Using the seven mops that have not been opened, I place the mops with the bottom side down on the top of my canvas or my MDF to start making the tree. And I just lay them down and work with the fiber and move it around until I am happy with the way that the top of the tree looks. This is really the fun part. This is the creative part. And it's just 
so much fun. Continue adding the mops, moving them around, working on the tree branches in a way that pleases you creatively until you've added all seven mops in a design that you are happy with. I became so immersed in working on my tree, there was a piece of paper towel stuck to my left glove and I was so engrossed in what I was doing, I didn't even notice it until I started working on the roots. So please try to ignore the big piece of paper towel stuck to my left hand. Once you're happy with the way the top of your tree looks, you start using the part of the mop that has been removed from the mop and just taking strands, you just work on the trunk and design your trunk however it pleases you. I started out with a hole in the trunk and then I later went back and filled it in. It Somehow it just didn't look right to me, but I thought it was a good idea. Next, you add the roots, continuing with the long strands and I wanted my roots, roots to be long and hanging off the end of the painting. And I wanted them to go mostly to the right side of the tree to give movement to the artwork. I continued to work with the trunk and the roots on both sides of the tree until I was happy with the way that the whole project was turning out. Pull the tree trunk forward and place the branches over the top of it so that you have uh, branches covering the tree trunk and let it start to dry. When the mops on top are about halfway dry, they're shaped like I want them to and I remove them to dry on the side, fix the trunk and let the mop heads dry because they take about twice as long to dry as the rest of the project. Make sure they're about halfway dry because at that point they will hold their shape very well. The trunk itself adhered pretty well to the MDF but it, as you can see it's really not going to hold up over time. The roots are great but the trunk needs some help. So what I did is I drilled small holes in between on either side of the trunk and I pulled some wire through and twisted it on the back of the MDF. It wasn't floral wire, it was a thicker gauge, but I'm not sure what the gauge was. Next, I placed all of the tree branches back on the top of the tree, how I wanted them shaped, and then I opened up the middle portion drilled a hole on either side and pulled it through each of the mop pieces. So we've got seven mops and one branch that are wired in. The next thing I did is I removed the hanging hardware from the painting and I placed it because it was on the top and the bottom and I was hanging the painting differently and I used the same wire, I just doubled it and I placed it into the hardware in order to securely hang the artwork. Everything is now attached and this project is done. I love the way this turned out. I really, really love this tree. I think it's so beautiful. I just can't believe that you can make something so beautiful from a mop. I had strands left over, so here comes DIY number two. With the mop strands that I had left over, I used a 12 inch wooden heart from the Dollar Tree, and I just started placing the strands around the heart, placing them together as close as possible and crossing the bottom portion 
of the strands kind of crisscrossing them at the bottom. And at first, the strands were very short, but I continued to crisscross them. I kind of liked the way that it was looking. And then adding more strands, about one third of the way down, I stopped making a V in the heart and I started adding all of the strands, each strand straight across. And as I did this, each strand at the bottom became longer and longer. So at the bottom, sometimes I would cross the strand and other times I would pull the strand back over to the same side, depending on how thick it was looking at the bottom and what the design looked like. I wanted it to look like it was kind of a woven design once I finished with it. So I continued to add all of the string around the heart while it was straight until all of that was filled in. And the bottom is looking very pretty. You can see how I am not going across with some of the strands at the bottom, but going down the middle or pulling them back onto the same side. You just have to use your judgment and work with each strand to create the design at the bottom. Once you've finished, continue to add more strands from one side to the other, just at the same point that you left off. And as you can see, at this point, most of the strands are going in the same direction and they're getting very, very long. I don't stop when I have finished with the strands on the heart, but I continue adding strands. Once I'm across the middle, I continue adding strands to the center of the heart. And you'll see in just a second how I do that and continue to move up the heart until I have reached the top of the heart with the strands. And this continues to make that woven look. And at this point, I'm not crossing the strands. I'm just laying them one on either side. And it's starting to have that woven look all the way down. And I continue adding all the strands until I have reached the top of the heart. And this is what it ends up looking like. I leave it like this to dry overnight. And when it's three quarters dry, I come in and I fold the top of the strands in until I'm happy with the way that they look. And they're nearly 100% dry. But I use a hot glue, a combination of hot glue and E6000 Fabric Fusion to keep the design of the strands where I want it on both sides. And as you can see, there's some parts of the strands that the color didn't pick up. So I've got some white spots around the uh, edge of the art and some white spots on the strands. I also use some E6000 just to make sure that uh, all of the pieces on the heart that were going around the heart were well adhered to one another. And then I just worked on the design and how I wanted it and how I wanted the string to hang down. And once I was happy with that, I mixed some white paint with brown paint until it matched the color that I had dyed the yarn 
and I, with a small paintbrush, I just went over all the areas that had white paint on them and painted them until they all matched. And then I left the piece to dry 100% overnight. And this project is finished. All that's left is I need to add a hanger to the back of it. And it's absolutely beautiful. DIY number three. Using a 3.8 inch ball of styrofoam, I took the remainder of the strands and started making a messy ball of yarn. I just indiscriminately wrapped the strands around and around and around the ball of yarn and even if it wasn't completely round uh, at some parts it's okay because the glue is still wet on the fabric and so it's malleable you can push it and shape it and then towards the end when I was filling in the empty spots I decided that I was going to put a little top knot on the top of my little messy ball of yarn. So I started collecting pieces of yarn at the top of the ball. And as you can see, I have a little top knot there and I'm shaping the ball and using another piece of the yarn or the mop. I tie, I tie it tightly around the top, around the little top knot. Then I cut and shape the top knot, kind of like you would a messy ponytail on top, until I was happy with the way that it looked. I just kept moving the strands around and tried to add some height to them and try to make sure that that was... Um, symmetrical all the way around and that it still had that round shape but with an interesting little something extra on top until I was happy with the way that my messy ball of yarn looked and it turned out so cute I just love it and this is how it turned out I just love it it turned out so great. I, I, I couldn't have hoped for a more interesting piece, a messy ball of yarn. Thank you so very much for watching this tutorial. And I hope that it inspires you to make something beautiful. Keep in mind that you can use any size MDF heart or ball of yarn. It doesn't have to be as large as mine and you can use your own color schemes. So you can make it a lot larger, you can make it a lot smaller, you can use different colors, whatever speaks to you. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. And that way you'll be notified the next time that I post a project. Take care and I'll see you next time.